Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Bill. I am Ricky Camilleri. Uh, for two seasons, she's been the killer reality show EP on Lifetime's hilariously on point Unreal. And Constance Zimmer is back in the third season of the show, and this time these ladies are somehow exploring feminism within the walls of their absurd romantic nightmare show, Everlasting. Let's take a look. I'm committed to honesty, no lies. Is that really what you thought your problem was? Lying? <laughs> Everlasting is about to be canceled for real. I need you. I know you think you could do too. It's gonna be a great season. Let's yeah. do this. Action already. She's hot, smart, but single. Let's get this sausage party hey. started. I thought women were dramatic. From this moment forward, the only rules are the rules that I make. I don't think she's got it anymore. She's smart. We can't handle her the same way. I don't trust you as far as I can punt you. If she's not feeling it, we make her feel it. Make some drama, and I need it now. Job. You crossed a line. Oh, suddenly there's a line? It's a little thing in life that I feel. She always protects the star. No, she always protects the show. Constance Zimmer, let's hear it. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Of course. What people at home don't know is that you were sitting here during that trailer and it was a very awkward moment for you. Where I'm having sex with a naked man? Yes, it's very awkward. It was awkward when we shot it as well. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the new season and, and, and what it's covering and, and, and where it's going. But first, let's talk about your sweatshirt, which is amazing. Isn't Feminist. so cute? Yeah. Give her a round of applause Feminist. for that. Feminist. And it says over here, I, not your baby. Damn straight. It says amazing right there? It says there? amazing over here, which my favorite was, this was hanging on a hanger when I was packing to come, and my daughter, who's 10, this was hanging, and she's like, oh, Mom, that's my patch. And I said, no, that's my patch on my sweatshirt. She, because this patch, obviously, you can go and buy. And she thought that I had taken her patch to put on my own clothes. And I was like, no, I actually bought it this way. <laughs> oh, you bought it that way. You didn't yeah. patch it yourself. No, I didn't, I didn't make it myself. Oh, okay. Well, we have, I love it. Yes, it's cute, right? Yeah. What is that? Oh, rainbow, and it ends with me in the heart. <laughs> I love a good rainbow. Constance, I'm curious, you know, what, you are so good at playing this character. And it's kind of, it's, a, uh, it's not the same character in any way, but it's a version of the character that I think that you kind of played on Entourage, right? Just like fast talking, very smart, cynical, hardworking uh, strong woman. woman. Strong woman, right. yeah. Where do you think that comes from? Where do you think, when do you think that started and when casting directors started being like, yeah, well, this is a constant Zimmer role? Uh, first of all, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you, I, you know, I actually give all the credit to Entourage uh, because... I think it was once I played Dana Gordon, that was kind of what everybody saw me as. And because it was a character that they allowed to grow from being like an assistant to the head of the studio to then becoming the head of the studio in the end. And was it, that an audition that initially got you that role too? Uh, yeah, it, the, the part was originally only three episodes. And so I thought that's all I was gonna do, and then I ended up on the show for seven years. So that was an uh, exciting surprise. And because I think uh, Doug Allen, to his credit, felt like we need these women represented, especially on such a show that was such a male chauvinistic show, even though we all, <laughs> even though we all loved it. To say the least. I yeah. mean, but I don't know if a show like that will exist anymore. So I'm pretty sure that show could not happen right now. No, 
Pretty sure not. Or, but I mean, to be honest, it could, but it would have to explore different elements of, of that culture. Like, yes. that culture would have to be a bit more, it would be a little less, I think, uh, trivial and fun. Exactly. And, and, and not, I mean, now it wouldn't be taken so lightheartedly, I believe. But, but that's what we love it for, because it was doing something that no show had ever done before. And so I think that's also why the whole Dana Gordon thing coming into such a male-dominated show made such a big impact. And uh, I don't know. I, it's funny because I'm constantly trying to get away from these characters, even though I love them. I love playing the strong women that really don't apologize for anything because I apologize for everything in my <laughs> in my real life. So it feels good to be able to play these characters. But I really think it was Dana Gordon because that was just kind of what set the ball rolling. Now, uh, in this new season, uh, and we're going to get to that in just a second, the, uh, the sort of bachelorette, if you will, is, a, uh, is kind of a female executive herself. I'm wondering, when you were doing Dana Gordon, did you ever meet any other female executives who wanted to talk to you about Dana Gordon that watched the show and maybe even like studio? I think there were a few, you know, studio women running studios at the time of Entourage. Yes, there were. They just weren't being talked about. And so... Amy... Amy... Amy Pascal. was running Sony. And right. then who was the woman just before her that was running Paramount? Uh, Sherry Lansing. Sherry Lansing. Yeah, yeah. Sherry Lansing is the epitome of a female studio executive who is... She's so amazing. Right? And so it just wasn't being talked about. Again, it's there, there were a, a, a few of them. And so we were just bringing it into the forefront. But the funniest story for me is actually I was on a plane and I was waiting in line and this woman was right in front of me and she said, I know you. And, and she said, are you in my yoga class? You know, do, which happens every day of my life. I'm always in somebody's yoga class. But she <laughs> said, uh, and I said, no, actually I don't take yoga. And you know, my husband has gotten to a point now where he's really good about saying, She's an actress. She's actually on television. And the woman said, I don't watch television. And he said, oh, okay. Well, I'm just, letting, you. I'm just letting you know that maybe that's where you might know her from. And she's like, no, I don't watch TV. So I'm sure it's not that. And then that was it. And then we were sitting on the plane. And halfway through the flight, she walks up and she sits next to me in the aisle. And she says, I am so sorry. I just realized that you play an executive on television, right? And I said, yes. And she said, I'm an executive. And I thought you were an executive that I had seen on the Paramount lot. I didn't realize you were an actor who plays an executive. And I said, wow, that is the nicest compliment anyone has ever given me. <laughs> because I was like, that's so cool. It, it be Dana Gordon just kind of became somebody that people felt was real yeah and that to me is the biggest compliment as an actor that you can get that and then you felt like a real executive in that moment and then i was moment. like yeah. let me tell you what movie you should pick up <laughs> it's right here in my laptop <laughs> uh so yes it did happen a lot and i did have a lot of uh female executives thanking me for doing such a, a great job of representing, you know, the brand of representing strong women and and not apologizing. You know, that's the thing that we all have to learn as women is to stop apologizing for being strong and for knowing what we want. And I think that's what's really cool about this season as you bring it up is that Caitlin's character is coming on this show because she wants to. She's not there to like fix some kind of publicity problem that's happened in her career. She is coming there because she is determined to meet the man of her dreams because she is going to control the environment. That's what she thinks. And that's where the first problem arises. Well, and that's why it seems like this season, uh, going off the first few couple episodes that I've seen, this season is, re and also that right there, cross out lady and put boss, is really about the conflict between these women who all have some similar ideals, but can't actually touch those ideals at all within the framework of the world that they operate in. Right. Uh, but I also feel like they're women that play by their own rules. Um, I think you and I were talking about how I think there's a world that is ideal for everybody and everything they do. And, but it's called ideal for a reason because <laughs> it's kind of hard and it's unattainable or so you think. But I think these women and what makes this show so different is that they will do 
everything and anything and they don't care about the outcome as long as the show is good. And that being a, uh, from a woman is, that's a big deal. That's a lot to take on. And so when Rachel and Quinn are faced with now another woman who's saying, no, you're gonna do this my way and otherwise I'm leaving. And, it's, and it, it's, it was rough, it was hard because you can't manipulate women the way you manipulate men. <laughs> Am I right? I mean, it's Says different. Says you. Says, Says me. You. Um, but you know, and we get to like objectify men. I mean, when do you ever get to do that? Yeah, you really do. We. Like, you really objectify men in a great way. It was weirdly fun as the character, as the character. I would never do it as Constance, but as the character, it was a lot of fun to just yell at them and call them bad names that I don't know that I can say on this show. Well, it's different when you're objectifying uh, men because the power structure is different. You don't have that immediate if, guilt of like, oh, we shouldn't be doing this. Isn't this, this right? Isn't and right. the men were uncomfortable. Yeah. They were like, whoa, this feels weird. I'm like, yeah, welcome, welcome to our world. <laughs> it should feel weird, and guess what? It's gonna get weirder, <laughs> you know. And and that was kind of to be able to be in in like Quinn and be able to kind of feel like I could speak for what all women wish they could say in those situations or those scenarios. That's so fun. And being based in a reality show makes it even, I mean, all bets are off. What is it like going from, the, from first season to second season to third season with the show where it seems like the writers have a core idea that they want to explore in each season? And then they get to, and then, I mean, what does it feel like when they bring that to you? Like the core idea in this season is this. It always feels enormous. It always feels like, how are we going to do that? How are we going to accomplish that? And I know that they have spoken about kind of writing the Quinn and Rachel storyline and then... Uh, working their way out from that because we're very complicated characters. Yeah. And so how we then deal with and handle people becomes a whole nother story plot. I'm always amazed at what we get away with, what we shoot and that what airs. Uh, from the first season to the third season, we're all just more comfortable in the uncomfortableness because now we know that it could end up on television. When we were doing the first season, we were like, I was never gonna air. What did you just call me? You know, and then you saw Or like it. that sex scene that we saw in the yeah. trailer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, that wasn't in the trailer. That's on Quinn's desk in her office. No, I meant in the trailer that like that we just watched. Yeah. Okay. The oh, you preview. Mean not in a yeah. actual trailer. <laughs> the trailer, right? I went straight to trailer trash. That's what I did. I just went right there. Um Yes, and you know, that's also a very interesting storyline because, you know, we shot season three a year ago and it was locked and done, you know, by June of last year. And wow. it, you will find it is unbelievably relevant with what's happening today. But we're also flipping that on its end too because you will see that Quinn gets in trouble for being aggressive and uh, it's interesting to see how she handles it, but I think that's it. You don't see that often on television either. It's, it's always about a male aggressor, and here we have a female aggressor, and it's different. It's constantly shifting the perspective. What does it feel like to present that on television when we seem to be in this age right now where the idea of things being complicated has to be sort of pushed aside for the betterment of causes or ideas, which are causes and ideas that I believe in. But sometimes we can't really talk about what's complicated about some of these things because, you know, we do have to push forward. The, the, we, have to, we do have to move forward with progress. But this show isn't afraid of kind of showing the blurry lines between all of this. I, I like it. I like that they're okay with maybe making people uncomfortable. Um, a lot of the topics are controversial, but they should be. Otherwise, they wouldn't start conversations. They would just be like, okay, got that, seen that, done that. And I'm happy that it's kind of through these two women because even though they work very similarly, um, their paths uh, constantly move away from each other to then just somehow find each other again, even though they've hurt and crushed a each other and other people. There's like 
a lot of death, you know, literally and figuratively. <laughs> well, she believes something about herself that may or may not be true, that she's a better person than what this is, than what she's good at. And your character doesn't care, it seems. Well, I just think she's she stuffed it down a lot better than Rachel has because, I mean, you look at the end of season two, you know, everything that she thought she didn't want and then, you know, she wanted to get married and she wanted to have kids and then when she was told she couldn't, then she, it's just another brick and it's another piece of armor that will just make her realize this is it. This is who I am. I'm never changing and it's about time to just embrace it and go crazy and that's what season three is, is about Quinn kind of even though she's stumbling a lot in the beginning of the season trying to grasp who is she and is this really who she is, that ultimately she's like, I, you know, there's so many curse words I want to use. Oh, you're allowed to. Oh, I can? Yeah. Oh, well, it's... I should have told you that. I, I know, sorry. really? I'm just like, um, how do I say this without cursing? No, but it is definitely a moment in season three of both of them addressing their demons and understanding which of those demons are really who they are and which ones have uh, need to go away and or they might never go away. And I think we all are afraid to embrace uh, who we are, our good and our bad. Um, but I think if we don't embrace all of it, then we can't put out what is the valuable part. And that's kind of what they're dealing with this season. And when Quinn is realizing this is it, this is my life, then I'm going to make this the best, you know, damn life I can. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty powerful. It's it's powerful, but it's hard. It's it's very challenging this season. <laughs> I'm sure you've been asked this since the first season, but are you a bachelor viewer? Do you do you watch the show? I don't watch the show. I watched one season when I got the part because I read the first script and I said, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> I don't watch it either. I've just Yeah, I, I I thought I just thought this is so weird and odd and People act this way and they do this and all on television. And so I had to watch one season of The Bachelor just to understand what was happening. And that's really all I needed to see. What were your thoughts? I, I was incredibly confused. <laughs> I just, I really don't think I watched an episode without my jaw on the floor. I just couldn't, I, well, I was mesmerized. I mean, I get it. I totally get it. You just, you turn it on and you tune out and you just stare. Yeah. And it's, I get it. But uh, that was all sense I needed of, to Is see. there a feeling while watching it of like, why are you doing this to yourselves and why am I doing this to myself? Uh, well, but as the watcher, you're not really doing anything to yourself. You're just getting like free kind of mind numbing fun. Fair enough. Right? Fair enough, yeah. I mean, we all deserve that sometimes. We can't always Absolutely. be watching shows that are like you know, political, and you're just like, oh, my God, the word, the world's going to end. You know, you got to, like, tune it off sometimes. <laughs> I think I get that from The Bachelor, though. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you oh could just God, go the to world's going to end. Right, right, exactly. Uh, let's get some questions. Who has a question? Right here. Hi. Hi. Okay, so I have sort of a two-part question. So first, have you ever had to harness your inner Quinn? And then the second part is, what's your best form of reality check, if that happens? Okay, harness my inner Quinn, like, as Constance? Oh. Mm, not really. I really, I, this is going to sound really weird, but I don't know who that, I don't know that, I don't, I look at that and I'm like, that's me, but that is really not, like, I don't know who that person is. And it is a weird thing that happens to me, like, it just kind of, when I put it all on and the makeup and the everything, it just kind of becomes this entity that I exist in and then I have to leave at the door because it's a lot and it's really exhausting and it's really dark. And it's, you know, I, I can't like go home to my husband and my 10 year old and, and just have it all still there and brimming. So direct it, them around the kitchen. Yes, like exactly. you're EP in the show. Exactly. Um, so, I don't know, I don't really think I do, just because it's so different from who I am in real life. Uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, my husband would probably say he's seen it once. That's probably being fair, where he was like, oh, 
all right, so now I see where that comes from. Uh, <laughs> but otherwise, I would say I'm, I'm, it's pretty easy to just kind of leave that and go be myself. But, uh, and when do I give myself a reality check? Hmm. When I notice I laugh at a lot of my own jokes. <laughs> right? And then I go, am I doing that because I... I go, oh, I'm really insecure, and I'm like, <laughs> at least if I laugh, I look cute. <laughs> but that's, that would be like my own kind of weird reality check. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's great. what husbands and wives are for as well. To go, what are you laughing at? Right. Why are you laughing at yourself? Yeah. Right. Reality check. Thank you. It is, fu it is funny, but because I do, I do notice it, so especially when I watch stuff back. I'm like, oh, Constance, it wasn't that funny. You didn't need to laugh at it. It wasn't like, you know, I don't know. Don't watch stuff back. Don't watch stuff back. Don't, Ugh, don't, trust watch, me. don't do that. It's real hard. Yeah, I don't do it. Real hard. Uh, next question. I think our last one. Who's got right here? Hi. Hi. First of all, really excited for the next season. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know how much inside information you got from The Bachelor of like the behind the scenes. Well, I personally did not talk to anybody or do any research because I didn't want anybody to think that my character was based on them, based on like, oh, I was in a room with her when she was researching this show. But one of the creators of our show, Sarah Shapiro, did work on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette for three seasons. So we just get all of our intel from her. And it's unfiltered. So kind of feels like the best place to get it. Has she ever told you anything that was totally shocking that somehow didn't make it in the show? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Every day. Every day. It's, it's, it, it, is, it is shocking. That's why when I see the stuff we do on our show, I mean, you know, I have this crazy thing. I've told this story now a lot, so I apologize if you guys have heard it. But for me, it was season two, and we had done this episode where Rachel puts something in one of the contestants' food and it makes her shit her pants on live television. And all the critics said, that's it, that's it. They've jumped the shark too much, way over the top, over-exaggerated, no way, never gonna happen. Our show aired on Monday. On Tuesday, Bachelor in Paradise aired and the lead, like, bad guy that everybody didn't like shit his pants on national television. So you know what? I was like, yes, okay, let's all just back up a little bit. <laughs> it's so weird for critics to say this show jumps the shark in any way. I mean, this show from the beginning has been, like, a really great soap opera with a reality show within it. You know, it, it, it plays in a, in, an ex, in, a, in, an, in a heightened world, I think, as, as we said. It's not supposed to be. Like, a re it's not supposed to be reality. Yeah, right? but people think reality shows are real. And they so, think, and they think actors acting on camera. Therein are real lies well. the rub. I'm just saying. It's but but that's why it wasn't even. <laughs> I, I just loved that it just goes to show you that reality shows are sometimes even further than we could even uh, imagine. And it was just crazy that our show aired for it was. I was really excited about it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Did you guys celebrate? Oh, it already aired, so you weren't shooting when it when it happened. Right? No, uh, it wasn't. But that was. But we was actually had an event. Text messages people calling and like. Yes. Oh, I was texting with Sarah, the uh, creator, and I was like, "Can you believe it?" And then and then what happened, which is what I love so much, is that it started this conversation of everybody said, okay, so now, did the producers put something in his food because they don't like him because that's what Rachel did on Unreal? And I was like, whoa, our show is now, what's happening? Like, now it's getting real meta, and the lines are crossing, and they're taking this show, but this is a scripted series, and they're crossing it into a unscripted series, and... I, that was when I thought, uh oh, like this could get this could get a little weird. Well, we'll see if any of any of that happens uh, with this season. When does this season premiere? When can people tune in? Monday, February twenty sixth, on Lifetime at ten p.m. Everybody, Constant Zimmer, everybody, Whoa! let's hear it.